Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Unsilent. Our continuing look at the 1994 Formula One World Championship through Grand Prix 2 has brought us to round three of the F1 season, the San Marino Grand Prix. The weekend of April 29th to May 1st, 1994 will forever remain one of the most tragic weekends in motorsport. Over the course of the weekend, three very serious accidents occurred, two of which claimed the lives of Roland Ratzenberger and the legendary Ayrton Senna. While the events of the San Marino Grand Prix can be upsetting to some, it is only proper that a retrospective of the 94 season includes coverage of the fatal accidents of Ratzenberger and Senna. Some would prefer not to relive these events. If this in any way makes you feel uncomfortable, I urge you to close your web browser now. Thank you for watching. That brings us to round three at the Imola Circuit. The Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari, the spiritual home of the Scuderia Ferrari in Formula One. This is the layout as it was in 1994. It was greatly changed in 1995 and then changed again in 2009. And we will take a look at those changes in just a moment. But as you can see from the chicane right before the start finish line all the way to the very far right of the screen the hairpin called tossa it was a straight shot with no braking and no lifting and here is the revised layout in 2017 of the imola circuit as you can see now there's a chicane at Tamburello, a chicane at Villeneuve, changes at Aqua Minarelli, which is 910, and then if you see 16 and 17 in 1994, that was a double chicane, right, left, left, right. But in a first for this video series, we're going to take a look at the changes that have occurred from 1994 to 2017 and see how the track is different from inside the cockpit of a Formula One car. Now, obviously, we're going to look at 1994 through Grand Prix 2, but the modern version of Imola we're going to look at through Project Cars. Here is 1994 through Tamburello. Now, Tamburello is where Senna had his fatal accident. Here, it's just a flat left at full speed. Now, the modern equivalent is a third gear left, right, left. Here is the first left and the right. Run it out to the curb, and what was a lazy left in 94 is a much tighter left onto the straightaway and here is the difference I use the start finish line as a reference point so you can see the difference in speed it's over three seconds faster with that chicane even with modern cars now here's a look at Villeneuve named after the legendary Canadian driver for the Scuderia Ferrari just a right you scrub off a little speed but now it is a fourth gear left right and it also slows down the run into Tossa. Makes it a little harder to overtake someone on the brakes into the hairpin. As you can see, they've moved the, the right just a little bit in the modern, so it's a longer run into Tossa. Now here's Aqua Minarelli, right, left, right, and then the final right. It's a first gear series of corners back in 1994. Now it is a very fast right break down to third gear and go through the second part. I much prefer this new version of Aqua Minerale. It's got a lot of G's and it requires a lot of skill to keep the car under control and you're going really fast through that first part. And the final change that we're going to look at is Variante Bassa, the final chicane. And then left right. Very quick on the first part of the chicane, but slow down the first gear in the second part. They retained that second part from 1995 onwards through 2009. Now here's Variante Bassa. There. It's now flat out from Rivazza, the double left at the bottom of the circuit, straight through to Tamburello. And once again, here is the comparative look to side by side. It's a quick chicane for the first part and slow chicane for the second part. That slow chicane, by the way, still remains in the bike version of the circuit. A quick recap before we move on to this round of the Formula One World Championship. Lacey Lees from Coulthard. They have both won races. Lacey at the Pacific Grand Prix at Ada and Coulthard at Interlagos for the Brazilian Grand Prix. We are sitting in P6 with six points. Meanwhile, here is the Constructors' Championship. Four points from four opportunities in the first two rounds for Ferrari has them leading the World Constructors' Championship ahead of Williams-Renault on 17. 
here's Friday qualifying. And in my first qualifying attempt, I absolutely bollocks it up into the final part of the chicane. I do set a good enough time for 12th, but I decided to go around for another lap, and... Well, uh, by that time, my time had fallen me down to 19th, but we are on a flyer this time. To try and bring me back to the field, I used the default setup, and I was good enough to get P4 through Friday qualifying. But I would be changing my setup over the course of the weekend. Here's a look at the results from Friday qualifying. The first round of qualifying for the San Marino Grand Prix. It's Coulthard in the number two that would have been driven by Ayrton Senna for this race weekend. Followed by Schumacher taking up his second spot behind the number two Williams. Following him, Hill, and I'm in P4. Then you've got Hakkinen, Berger, Katayama showing that the Tyrrell Yamaha was for real. And then Rubens Barrichello in P8 followed by Jean Lacy in P9. Now I want to go back to P8 and Rubens Barrichello because I mentioned three serious accidents at the start of this video. And Barrichello's was one of them. As we go on board with Barrichello, it was right here at the first part of Variante Bassa that he had a very serious accident in Friday qualifying. If you check the dash, we'll show footage. Not all the footage, but there he goes over the curb at Bassa, lost control through Bassa, flew up into the top of the tire wall and rolled from about 120 miles per hour to nothing in no time flat. Though it looks like a very serious accident and certainly scared many members of the paddock, including in the Jordan garage. It was quick action by the FIA medical delegate, the professor, Dr. Sid Watkins, that saved Barrichello. All he ended up with was some minor injuries to his nose and arm. He didn't partake in the rest of the weekend, but he was there for the rest of the weekend. On to Saturday qualifying. Just a little bit overcooking it into the final part of Bassa once again. But a little better than the first attempt at going through Bassa, as you saw on Friday. But I decided to keep going on light fuel. Going through the left right, or the right left, then the left right. Charging up towards the line. And a 125, 265, an absolutely blistering time, but only good enough for P2. Now that's a good story when you look at it on the dash, but the story gets a little better when you look at it on the timing sheets. Here it is. Look to the far right. Three thousandths of a second behind David Coulthard for the pole position of this race. I did some quick maths. That difference was all of eight inches at the line based on the average speed of the lap. So that's basically blink and you've missed it. That's how close we were to matching Coulthard. Now, I did go out for another attempt in qualifying. But uh, as you'll, you're about to see, I only I did manage to improve my time three hundredths of a second behind. But the real story of Saturday wasn't the action in qualifying. It was Roland Ratzenberger, the Austrian rookie who moved from sports cars to drive for the Simtech team, suffered a fatal crash coming out of the Vilnov curve on Saturday qualifying after his front wing failed. He died upon impact. Roland Ratzenberger was 34 years old. Though it was a silent paddock on Saturday night in Imola, Formula One continued on towards Sunday's San Marino Grand Prix as shall we. On the pole position, it's David Coulthard, just three thousandths of a second ahead of me in P2. Michael Schumacher was on row number two. He started P2 in the actual race. Damon Hill sits on the outside of row number two in our Grand Prix 2 powered recreation. Jean Lacy in the Ferrari, making the home fans happy, starting in P5 alongside Mika Hakkinen in the McLaren Peugeot. Gerhard Berger starts behind his teammate in P7. Ukyo Kariyama in position number eight in the Tyrrell. Rubens Barrichello was the slowest qualifier for the San Marino Grand Prix, but he is P9 here. Olivier Panis in the Ligier Renault on the outside of that. Johnny Herbert in P11 in the Lotus Mugenhagen, and Johnny Morbidelli in P12. 
Pierluigi Martini in the minority and Andrea De Cesaris in the Sauber on row seven. Jasper Verstappen starts six rows behind his teammate in uh, P15, Martin Brundle in P16 on row eight in car number eight, the McLaren Peugeot. The second Ligier of Eric Bernard is on row number nine. Michele Alboreto in the other Minardi on the outside of row nine. Mark Blundell starting from 19th alongside Eric Coma in the LaRousse Ford. Car 20 starting in position number 20. I do like a little bit of symmetry like that. On back to row number 11, it's Heinz Harold Frentzen alongside Christian Fittipaldi in the second of the footwork Fords. Then it's Alex Zanardi in the Lotus Mugen Honda, Olivier Beretta in the second of the La Russe Fords. And then we go on back to row 13, it's John Paul Belmondo in the Pacific and David Brabham in the Simtech. In this race, only 25 cars started Ratzenberger was the 26th and final qualifier in the San Marino Grand Prix, and his position was left vacant on the grid when the race started. The warning horn goes for the game, and we wait for the red lights to come on. Four red lights, wait four to six seconds, and then green and away we go! Not a spectacular start, but a reasonably good one that keeps me in position number two off of the lights. If you look at the mirror, good start for the Ferrari of Alessi. As we go to the external cam, the TV camera, as we watch the charge down towards turn number... I guess you would call it turn number three. As Alessi goes by Schumacher, but we're watching for Johnny Herbert from P12 heading into Villeneuve. Outbreaks everyone! into Tossa and finds his way up into P8. Back at the head of the grid with me. Around the second part of Ravazza and just a little bit of the grass and around I go. I fall three spots down to position number five. When you look at the replay, it's a lot worse than what I had. Oh, no, we're not going to the replay. We're going to watch me bungle the last part of uh, Variante Bassa. I thought it was just a toe and the replay shows I actually got both wheels well outside of the curbing. Farther up front, Michael Schumacher makes a charge to the front, ahead of the Ferrari of Jean Lacy. He said, John, keep that seat warm, I'm coming in 1996. Couple laps later, here I am, it's my turn to line up a Lacy. Out of Variante Alta, down the hill towards Ravazza, a late stab of the brakes. Get a wheel on the curb, lock up the right front just a little bit as a result, but stick it through and into position number four. As we take a look at the replay right here. Charge. Just keep the slipstream. Charge up the inside. There's that little lockup from hopping on the curb. I'm going to hold it through and down out of Ravazza. One more look at it. Had to be very slow through the first part of Ravazza to not hit Alessi. Give him space on the outside. A few more laps after this. It's my nemesis, the second part of Variante Bassa. I get it on the outside, come on the track, and then spin as I'm trying to get under power. Or did I? When we take a look at the replay, yes, I very much absolutely bottled it. Hopped the curb and into the wall, but the spin was hitting a lacy as the physics engine goes absolutely mental for just a moment. Watch it from a lacy's point of view. Hits me and sends me up the track and stops him stone cold. Some laps later, we're coming back on Alessi into second part of Bassa, and he makes a mistake into the second part of Bassa. I hit Alessi, I hit him again, and a third time, just for good measure. I should have been able to go by him as I pressured him into a mistake. Some decent AI for a 21-year-old game, but I could not pull off the pass there. So instead, we're going to take advantage of our dual slow exit out of Bassa and into Tossa. Dives it up the inside thanks to some slipstream and takes the position. He was looking at me into the top part at Aqua Minerali, but I was able to hold him off and retain the position. Now into Variante Alta. Hit the curb on the inside left of Alta and just spits me out wide of the curb. One lap later. Once again, we're going to try the move into Tossa. 
195 on the speedo and just enough for me to pull out and under a lacy suspension cam I love the suspension cam we don't get that anymore but a nice and easy move up the inside of a lacy into Tossa and that was the last bit of racing that we would do David Coulthard wins the race in the number two Williams we come through for position number four for the third time this season Though a race was run on the Sunday at the San Marino Grand Prix, all the racing world talked about was the death of Ayrton Senna. Following a safety car period, Senna lost control of his car and crashed at Tamburello, where he was killed instantly. Michael Schumacher won the race, but tragically, Formula One lost one of its greatest drivers ever. Ayrton Senna received a state funeral honors when he re was returned to Brazil. Streets were lined in Sao Paulo for his funeral, which was attended by many of his compatriots from Formula One. Senna was 34 years old. And here are the final results from our version of the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. It was David Coulthard who won the race for a Michael Schumacher who was able to get by Damon Hill as he charged towards the front but didn't have enough time to catch DC who recorded his second win of the season. Hill rounded out the podium for Williams. I was fourth once again. It was another double points finish for the Ferraris with Lacey leading home Berger. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be enough for Lacey to retain his driver's championship lead as we'll see in a second. Hakkinen was seventh. Johnny Herbert had a good day for the Lotus Mugen Honda in position number eight. Olivier Panis and Ligier Renault. That Renault engine is pretty good, as you can tell from the Williams. He was position number 9. Johnny Morbidelli with a, a good result in one of his home races in position number 10. Barrichello was 12th as we go on down the results. We see Mark Blundell and the Tyrrell only managed P17. Ukyo Kariyama, who we saw made a pit stop from position number 11, managed to recover to P19. And then as you go down the list, you have... Uh, David Brabham and John Paul Belmondo, the last two cars, both finishing off the lead lap. Also noteworthy, a bad finish for Heinz Harold Frensen in P23 in the Sauber, though his teammate the Chesers didn't do too much better. I did have some pace despite my mistakes. I did have the fastest lap of the race just ahead of Coulthard. We were matched pretty evenly all weekend between my Jordan and his Williams. And on to the World Drivers' Championship. David Coulthard, with his second win of the season, ascends to position number one in the World Drivers' Championship ahead of a Lacey. Damon Hill in position number three. I'm in P4 with three consecutive third places. But down in P7, it's Michael Schumacher with his first points finish of the season, which vaults him up on to the standings in position number seven. And I don't think he'll be staying there for very long. On to the World Constructors Championship. And it's Williams Renault, who with a double podium takes the lead ahead of the Ferraris. I'm powering Jordan to position number three, and Benetton moves up to P4 thanks to Schumacher's second place finish in this race. The next round of the Formula One World Championship on Grand Prix 2 is round four. It's the signature event of the Formula One season. It's the Monaco Grand Prix. From these fast permanent circuits at Interlagos and Ada and Imla to the tight twisting city streets of Monte Carlo. From grass, gravel, and paved runoff to Armco barriers on the side of the track, it certainly is a very different racetrack for Formula One, which is what makes it so special. The history, the prestige, the difficulty makes Monaco such a special race. But that's in two weeks' time that we will go to Monaco for the Monaco Grand Prix. We'll look at the race, the race we run in Grand Prix 2, the actual race in 1994, and a comparison of the track between then and now. But that's in two weeks' time. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you're new or if you want to see that race in two weeks, share on social media, follow on social media, the social media handle is Unsilent On Air. And until the next time, I'm Unsilent, thanks very much for joining me, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.